Welcome to module 2 of this course. So, in this module I will be talking about vectors, vector spaces and vector functions and uh, I will there will be 4 lectures and 1 practice problem session. Uh, in the first lecture I will talk about vectors and scalars, vector space, vector products. In the second lecture I will talk about linear dependence, basis and dimensionality. In the third lecture I will talk about uh, vector functions, scalar and vector fields and vector differentiation. And in the fourth lecture I will talk about gradient, divergence and curl which are 3 different ways of taking vector derivatives. And, uh, and then I will conclude in the fifth lecture with practice problems. So, each of the lectures will be about half an hour ok. So, let us get started. So, in the first lecture I'll I want to talk about vectors, vector space and vector products ok. So, all of you are familiar with the idea of vectors. So, what you know is that vectors have both a magnitude and a direction unlike scalars which have only a magnitude. So, scalars have only a magnitude whereas, vectors have magnitude and a direction. And so, a typical vector you might write in this form you might write a vector a as a x into x plus a y into y hat plus a z into z hat where x hat y hat and z hat alternatively you might write these as i hat j hat and k hat. So, you are, you are also used to this notation. So, you can write a vector in this form. So, a x a y and a z are the components and uh, sometimes instead of using a notation like this you can just use a notation where you show a bracket a x a y a z where you just show the components. So, this is an example of a vector in a 3 dimensional space, but uh, actually you can also have a vector in a 2 dimensional space. So, for example, suppose I just had a x a y this is a vector in a 2 dimensional space. You could have a vector in a 4 dimensional space, you could have x y z w you know you could have 4, uh, four dimensional vector space and there is nothing that stops you from defining vectors in 4, 5, 6 any dimensions. But what you notice is that uh, you have this idea of combining vectors. You can take two vectors and add them up, but if you take a vector in a 2D space and a vector in a 3 dimensional space then obviously, you cannot add them up. So, uh, you cannot combine 2 vectors in different spaces ok in, uh, in 1 and 2D space and 1 and 3D space or any 2 different spaces. So, so already, already with this idea we, we uh, want to generalize and formally define a vector ok. So, formally if you want to define a vector you define a vector as a member of a vector space and uh, what is a vector space will be the next question and that is what uh, we will address next. So, we need certain axioms that define a vector space ok and uh, we will look at these axioms next. So, a real vector space V ok. So, these are the axioms of a vector space. So, uh, what is a real vector space? You should keep in mind that a space is you can think of as a collection of objects ok. So, uh, a real vector space is a is a collection of objects. So, it is a collection of objects called vectors. So, it is a collection of vectors and what are the properties of vectors? So, the properties are that if you have 2 vectors A and B which are in this vector space V then you take a linear combination of them. You multiply by a scalar C 1, multiply A by a scalar C 1 and multiply B by a scalar C 2 ok and uh, you will get another vector and C 1 and C 2 can be any real numbers. So, C 1 and C 2 are any real numbers or real numbers. So, the idea is that you can multiply this vector by any real number and add it to another another vector multiplied by any other real number and you will still get a vector in the vector space. So, what it means in short what you say is the vector space is close to addition and scalar multiplication. That means, you add any 2 vectors you will get another vector, you multiply a vector by a scalar you will get another vector. Notice I am only talking about scalar multiplication. I am not talking about multiplication of vectors ok. So, the vector space is close to addition and scalar multiplication ok. That is the first axiom. Uh, the second axiom is that uh, there exists a vector called 0, 0 vector which is a member of the vector space V such that you can add it to any vector to get the same vector. So, A plus 0 gives you A 
ok. And uh, similarly, there is a vector called minus a vector which is the inverse of a ok, such that if you take a and add minus a to it, you get 0. So, corresponding to every vector, there is another vector ok, with exa uh, of exactly the same magnitude but opposite sign ok, such that if you add these two vectors, you get 0. So, this these uh, these seem very obvious at least for the vector spaces that we that we are used to dealing with but in fact these are the very axioms on which the definition of vector space is based the third axiom has to do with deal uh, with commutativity associativity and distributivity i have combined a bunch of axioms here okay so vector space addition is commutative so if you take a plus b it should be equal to b plus a similarly it is distributive if you take a plus b plus c, I can write that as a plus b plus c ok. Again these are fairly obvious. Similarly, scalar multiplication is also distributive. So, suppose I take c into a plus b, I can write as c a plus c b. Alternatively, if I take c 1 plus c 2 and multiply it by a, I can write as c 1 a plus c 2 a. Similarly, if I take c 1 into c 2 a, I can write that as c 1 c 2 into a. Again these are very obvious relations, but uh, these are in fact the formal conditions for uh, for a, for a vector space. Similarly, there is a scalar 1, if you just multiply 1 by a, you get a. So, uh, what why I want to go through this is that uh, you know you, you know these kind of uh, things are very obvious when you are dealing with uh, vectors in 3 dimensional space, but uh, but in a lot of uh, lot of different uh, areas you will see vectors that are not not necessarily vectors in 3 dimensional space ok. And uh, just to give you some examples, so the examples of real vector space. So, uh, you know the 3D vector space in or the Cartesian coordinates ok. So, you are so you are represented by a vector and you say that it has 3 components in the x, y, z direction. You can have a vector in 2 dimensions as I had said, you can have in 4 dimensions, 5 dimensions etcetera ok. Can you have a vector in 1 dimension? The answer is if you have a vector in 1 dimension, it is the same as a scalar because there is only one dimension. So, it only has a magnitude. Now, you can also have a vector space consisting of all functions of a single variable. So, suppose you take some function of x and you take the space of all functions ok. So, f is the space of all functions ok. So, uh, f of x ok. So, is a space of all functions of a single variable x. So, you imagine that you take any function of a single variable that is a member of this vector that is a member of this space f and it is easy to show that f is in fact a vector space because if you take if you take one function f 1 of x and you add another function f 2 of x, you will clearly get another function. So, this is also this is also contained in f. So, you add two functions of a single variable, you do not get a function of two variables ok, you will still get a function only of a single variable ok. Similarly, you do it you multiply by a scalar, you will get a function of a single variable. Similarly, the 0 function is also a member of this vector space. So, you can define a function that is 0 which is also a function of x and uh, so you can add it to any function and you will get you will get back the function. Similarly, you can also you can also talk about inverse you can talk about uh, and then and then obviously, the commutativity distributivity properties are trivially satisfied. So, the space of the set of all functions of a single variable that forms a vector space ok. Similarly, you can have functions of multiple variables. You can have a sp space containing these functions of the form f of x y or f of x y z and that would also be a vector space. So, remember the vector space consists of all possible functions. So, it is a space containing all possible functions. Just as you know you you, you think of 3 D Cartesian space or, th or a 3 dimensional space as the space of all possible vectors. So, we, so you can have any vector ok in th uh, and then the set of all possible vectors is what you call the space. Similarly, you could take a set of all matrices of a certain order. So, if I take any say 2 by 2 matrix, so 2 by 2 matrix will, would look like a b c d 
if I take the set of all possible, so where A, B, C, D can be any real number, okay, if I take the set of all possible matrices, then obviously if I add two matrices, I will get another matrix, if I multiply by a scalar, I will get another 2 by 2 matrix. So, it is close to addition and scalar multiplication, you can define your 0, okay, and uh, so that is also a vector space. Now, we can get to other things, you can say uh, what about polynomials of order n. So, the polynomial of order n will look like a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus up to a n x raised to n. And if you take the space of all possible polynomials of order n, okay. Now, if you take two polynomials of order n and add them up, you will get another polynomial of order n. If you take uh, uh, 0, that is also, you can also think of it as a polynomial of order n, where all these coefficients are 0, a 1, a 2, etcetera. So, that is also member of the vector space. So, the set of the space of all polynomials of order n, that is also a real vector space. Okay. Now, now uh, you would intuitively realize that uh, that uh, in order to in order to, if you if you look at the space of polynomials, right? And uh, let's let's just look for convenience polynomials of order two of uh, maximum degree two. And the reason I am saying maximum degree is that uh, is that if uh, I could also have, so this is a general polynomial of degree 2 and the maximum degree I am saying it is a maximum degree because if a 2 is 0 then it becomes a polynomial of degree 1. So, polynomials of maximum degree 2, okay. Now, what you see is that you if I want to specify the polynomial I just need to specify a 0, a 1 and a 2. Okay. So, I can I can write this as a 0, a 1, a 2. Okay. And so, what you immediately realize is this is just like a 3 dimensional space, because there are just 3 things you have to specify, 3 real numbers that you need to specify in order to specify any, any polynomial of maximum degree 2. So, actually it is equivalent, it is completely equivalent to a 3 dimensional vector space. Okay. There is no uh, formally there is no difference between these, and so and so uh, you can say that uh, similarly this uh, set of two by two matrices is equivalent to a four D. This is exactly equivalent to a four dimensional real vector space. So essentially, if uh, you say that uh, when you say a real vector space of order of some order there is only one kind i mean all the all the real vector spaces of order n you can just call them n dimensional vector n dimensional real vector space okay and so uh, what i would say is that uh, you have you have 3d space you have 4d space 5d space 6d space etc and uh, what we'll see later on is that the dimensionality of the space of functions is actually infinite okay and we'll give a formal definition of that okay now, notice that uh, when you see the axioms of a vector space, they only talk about addition of vectors and they talk about multiplication of vector by a scalar. So, they do not actually talk about uh, multiplying two vectors, okay. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, there are many ways to multiply two different vectors. So, there is not a unique way to define multiplication of vectors. Okay. Now, there are some common things that you have seen already when you when you deal with vectors. Okay. So, there are uh, certain kinds of products that you have seen the dot product. Okay. Now, the dot product is also formally referred to as the inner product. Okay. So, the inner product is is a more general word for a dot product. Okay. So, what is it? It, you, it is a scalar. So, inner product is a scalar okay, that you obtain from two vectors. Okay and uh, that should satisfy certain axioms. So, what are the axioms of an inner product? So, the inner product of a and b of two vectors a and b. So, this is the inner product, this is a notation. So, there are two ways to show it. You can show it either as either as a comma b or you can show it as a dot b. Okay, so, these are equivalent ways of saying this. And so, the inner product should satisfy that a dot b should be equal to b dot a. Okay. So, what you do is you define a scalar 
Okay, so based on these two vectors you define a scalar and that scalar should satisfy a dot b equal to b dot a and it should satisfy a dot a should be greater than or equal to 0. Any such definition is a valid inner product. Okay, so any such definition okay, of, uh, of a dot product is a valid inner product. Okay, and uh, formally we define the norm of a vector as uh, it is denoted by these double lines and that is just square root of a dot a. So, a vector space with a suitable inner product is referred to as a real inner product space. Okay. And what I want to emphasize is that you can have vector spaces where inner product is not defined, there is no definition of a dot product okay. or you can have uh, vector spaces where dot product is easily defined. Okay. But uh, formally uh, real inner product space uh, constitutes a vector space with a suitable definition of the dot product. So, examples of inner products. So, the usual dot product in 2D or 3D or other in, 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 in 3D vector space. So, suppose you have one vector a x, a y, a z okay? and you have another vector b x, b y, b z. Then their dot product is a scalar that is given by a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z. And you can see that I can extend this definition to two dimensions or other dimensions too. I can, I can use a similar definition for other dimensional vector space. So, this is one example of a dot product or an inner product. Okay. Now, uh, what about the vector space of functions? So, we talked about these functions f of x. So, suppose I had two functions f of x and uh, g of x. Okay. How do I define their dot product? Okay. So, uh, you can define dot, dot product. One definition is to say that the dot product of f and g, it should be a scalar. So, dot product should be a scalar and you notice that it should be commutative. So, f dot g should be equal to g dot f. Okay, and it should satisfy the norm condition. So, one way to de define it is to say that f of x, g of x, dx over whatever the range of allowed values of x is. So, so x goes from usually from minus infinity to plus infinity, then I can define it this way. So, notice that this is equal to integral g of x, f of x, dx. Okay. And also we notice that uh, we notice that f of x comma f of x okay, this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Now what you have is f of x square dx okay, which is greater than or equal to 0. So since uh, square of a function can uh, has to be greater than or equal to 0, the integral of square of the function has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. In fact, it is 0 only when f of x is 0. Okay. So, this is a valid definition of an inner product for a space of functions. Okay. Now, uh, the inner product defined this way, it satisfies the triangle and Schwarz inequalities. Okay. So, what is a triangle inequality? So, triangle inequality says that uh, if you take two vectors a and b, okay and you take the norm of a plus b. So, that should be less than equal to norm of a plus norm of b. Okay. And uh, what you think of is the following way. So, suppose you take a and you take b. So, this is a vector b vector. Now, you know that a plus b is nothing but this vector this is a plus b. Okay. And so, the norm, the length of this plus the length of this should be greater than the length of this. So, that is called the triangle inequality and uh, you know in 3D space you are used to thinking of this as saying that you know sum of two sides should be greater than the third side, greater than or equal to the third side. Okay. But this is a general relation for any, so the norm of a remember just to remind you this is square root of a dot a. Okay, so, it is defined in terms of dot product and this is actually a property of a dot product. So, any dot product 
that uh, satisfies the axioms of uh, dot product will satisfy the triangle inequality. There is another inequality called the Schwartz inequality okay, and uh, that we can write in the following way. So, you can write A dot B the norm of this of A or the I should not say the norm. So, what I should I should just say A dot B okay, which is already a scalar. Okay, so, A dot B is a scalar and that is less than or equal to norm of A. Norm of A is also a scalar multiplied by norm of B. Okay, so, this is the Schwartz inequality and again you know in, uh, in 3D in 3D we use A dot B is equal to norm A into norm B into cos cosine of theta where theta is the angle between the vectors. Okay. So, you have A and B if this is this angle theta then you are used to thinking of this dot product in this way. Okay. And uh, you know that uh, or I should rather show it slightly differently. So, I can show it here what I will do is I will show A and I will show B and this is theta. So, the angle between them and cosine of an angle has to be less than or equal to 1. So, we say that uh, A dot B should be less than or equal to norm A into norm B. Okay. Now, this again again is uh, generally true for an arbitrary vector space with an arbitrary inner product. Okay. Now, uh, the definition of dot product allows you to define something called a projection, projection of one vector onto another. So, again suppose you have A vector and you have this is your B vector. Okay. You can define, you can, you can ask what is the projection of B onto A. So, if you in three dimensions you know that if you drop a perpendicular from uh, the end of vector B to vector A, okay, then uh, this is called the projection. Okay. So, this this vector is called projection on to A of B. So, projection of B on A, okay, this is written as P on A of B. Okay. And uh, you can again show from the dot product that uh, P of can be written as A dot B okay, multiplied by A vector divided by norm of A. Okay. So, it is not hard to show. So, uh, you can think of this as just uh, uh, so, it is B the norm of B into cosine of theta. Okay. So, I can write this as okay. I am sorry there should be an A square. Okay. So, uh, I can write this as just norm of B into cosine theta okay, multiplied by a unit vector in the A direction. Okay. So, multiplied by unit vector in the A direction which is A vector divided by norm of A. So, this is the usual pr projection that you can define and again projection operators can be defined not just in uh, three dimensional space, but in arbitrary vector spaces. Okay. And again this is a very important tool in, in uh, quantum mechanics, the pro 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 projection operator and vector spaces will play a very big role in quantum mechanics. Okay. Now, there are other kinds of vector products that you can define. And uh, these are generally not as useful. So, for example, the cross product, so A cross B, okay. So, uh, this we usually write this as in terms of its components, and uh, so we write it as I, J, K, okay. And then you write AX, AY, AZ, BX, BY, BZ. And this is equal to minus B cross A. Okay, so, this is not symmetric. Okay. Now, uh, 
Now, this is a vector. So, A cross B is a vector. So, it is also called a vector product. This is very specific to th three dimensions. Okay. So, you need to be able to write this in an anti-symmetric form. So, this particular definition is specific to three dimensions and uh, in general you know cross products are defined for odd dimensions. Okay. But the usual cross product that we are used to seeing is defined for three dimensions. There are also other ways of taking products of vectors. Okay, one is called a direct product. So, uh, just to remind let us if I write a vector as A x A y A z and I write another vector as B x B y B z. Now, what we are doing when you are taking products of vectors is multiplying components. Okay. When you in the dot product you multiply the x with x, y with y and z with z and you add them up. In the cross product what you do is you multiply x with z and y with z and and uh, subtract from z with y and you and that you call the x component. So, you generate vectors. Okay. But you can define products. So, I will just write the direct product. Okay. And again there are many ways of defining direct products. So, one common way to define is to write this as A x B x A x B y A x B z and then you can write it as A y B x A y B y A y B z A z B x a z b y a z b z. Okay. So, what you are doing is you are taking all possible products you are taking x into x, x into y and so on and you are putting all of them in some sort of a matrix. This is referred to as a tensor. Okay. So, this is referred to as a second order tensor. Okay. So, second order second order tensor. Okay. And so, in this direct product in this form of the direct product you get a second order tensor this way. There are other ways to define the direct products, but uh, why I wanted to show you the direct product is to show you where tensors come in. Okay. And uh, tensors are actually fairly useful objects in chemistry. I mean in, in, uh, co in quantum mechanics we often deal with the moment of inertia tensor. Similarly, in uh, studying spectroscopy you would deal with the polarizability tensor and so on. Okay. So, I so will stop for here today. Okay. So, in the next lecture we will look at uh, we will look at uh, other properties of vectors, we will look at linear independence and basis and so on.